And I'm talking about the people, yeah, the people who lay the bricks, pour the cement, take care of patients, nurses. You know what I'm saying? The people who drive the bus, you know? I'm talking about the people who teach the classes. Help me out here, y'all. The hardworking Americans. Most of us. You know, 56% of all Americans got about $1,000 in the bank. Many have way less than that. A lot of people not ready for retirement. And I'm going to tell you something. When Democrats lose elections, bad things happen to good people. Separate their families, build a wall, have a hiring freeze on federal workers. That ain't right. That ain't right. And then want to jack up the price of an FHA loan, make it harder for people to get the American dream of home ownership. I mean, you know, I'm going to tell you, we talk about a lot of messed up things this guy has done. But the truth is, he is inflicting pain on people. People you love and care about. It's not theoretical, it's like Alice Germain is very pragmatic, is it not? Getting in between a woman and her doctor, trying to tell her what to do with her life and her family. That ain't right. That's a hell of a nerve right there. I thought these people believe in individual liberty and small government. But when they're talking about a vaginal probe or whatever, before you can exercise your right to choose, that ain't right. <laughs> Let me tell you all, the Republicans and the rich folks, the top 1%, and again, you know, there's rich folks supporting us, so don't get me wrong. You know, we don't want to judge, right? It's not everybody. But the Koch brother types, you know what I mean? You know, they got a party. The Republican Party says we are for the rich people, period, die. End of conversation, and we're going to discourage, divide, and disunify, and deceive in order to get them in power for what they want. The Democratic Party is the party of making a living for everybody. We are the party that says that if you labor every day and you work hard, we, you should be able to make a living, a livable way to take care of yourself and your family, retire in dignity, and have enough money and enough backup so that you can dream that your kids can even do better than you. That's the Democratic Party. And the Democratic Party also believes that if you are too old to work, too young to work, too sick to work, we will take care of you. And I am not afraid to say that I care about poor people. But I also want to say, but I also want to say, yeah, we're gonna raise the minimum wage. You know that to be true. But I also want to say, you know, minimum's not enough. You want a minimum marriage? That means you're barely talking. You want a minimum car? That means you hope to get there. <laughs> so we want way more than the minimum, y'all. Way more than that. Way more than that. I, I just want to say to you, that I just want to tell you all this, and I want you to write this on your heart. The Democratic Party does not exist for Democrats. It exists for the American people. Yeah. Being a Democrat today is a patriotic mission it is a quest, it is a goal, it is a sacred trust where you promise to fight every single day for the public good. That's what it is, that's what it's about. And that's what we need from you right now. That's what we need from you right now. And I'm telling you, if all of us will look a little bit bigger than our own individual station, everybody will be better off. A guy once said to me, Everyone does better when everyone does better. Yeah. His name was Paul Wellstar. And he told me something about organizing. And Paul Wellstone is in this room today. And I'm going to tell you all something. I'm gonna, you know, I don't really think, I even got very close friends of mine who were in the room. I don't think I've ever told you this, man. Because I, I don't really talk about it much because it embarrasses me a little bit. But I'm going to tell you something because I'm just feeling that flow right now. <laughs> Paul Wellstone, when I ran for a state legislature for the first time, he had been in the Senate, and he and I were both running on the same time. 
it was in October, and if you know what I mean by that, you know that it was only a few weeks before we would learn that we were going to lose him. And I was running for state legislature for the first time, and Paul, who, if you can believe it or not, was actually shorter than me. And he grabbed me and he said, come here, Keith. He said, hey, you're not just some lawyer, man. You're a justice lawyer. I want to see you in there. We're going to work together. And I'm going to tell you, I share that with you right now, because I don't, if you know me, you know I don't like going on about myself. You don't hear me talking about how old my mom was when I was born. And you don't hear me talking about how hard it was when I was a kid. You know why? Because my parents did the best they could for me and my brothers. And, and you know what? It's not about me anyway. I'm actually quite irrelevant to this situation. Anvil CIO and the nurses and the teamsters and all the names support me because of me. I know that. They're not support. I don't have a million people in those boxes supporting our campaign because of me. Y'all don't care how, what color I am, what religion I am, how tall or short I am. You don't care that people mistake me in bed all the time. <laughs> Until I see us standing next to each other, I go, you're the little guy. You don't, you, you don't care about that. What you care about is that is that, that lady who cleaned up the bathrooms in that hospital every day, she can earn a living where she can hope to retire in dignity. And when she looks you in the eye and she says, my daughter going to college. You know, you know, she can aspire to that if she deserves dignity. And don't be surprised if you fight hard enough that she reaches into her little check and sends us some money every week. You know why? Because she knows that she needs a party to fight for her. And that's why I want to go back to the Democratic Party. The Republicans got, the rich people got a party. The Democratic Party needs to be the party of the working people. The Democratic Party needs to be crystal clear that we are always, 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 always with the working people of this country. Another, another friend of mine, Ann Norris, a guy named Leo Gerard. He work, he's the president of the Steel Workers Union. Leo said to me, you know what, man, 30 years ago, there was 30,000 steel workers in Baltimore. He said, we might have three now. He said, you want to talk about what happened to Freddie Gray? Part of the story is all the plant closings and how this, all these plant shutdowns took hard working people from good paying jobs to minimum wage jobs, if that. And when people, and when job plants shut down, neighborhoods get shut down, schools get shut down, the tax base of the city goes down, working people get hurt. You know? We gotta have a party that is always on the side of working people, never not. We gotta have a party that talks about fair trade all the time. We gotta talk about, we gotta talk about investing and jobs, and we can never let any daylight between us and the working people, because if we do, some lying, conniving, slick, television personality with a billion dollars, maybe, <laughs> can market himself right into the presidency by dividing us. We can never let this happen again. I know you all agree with me. I know you all agree with me that, that Trump is, uh, is an existential threat to re representative democracy in the United States. Yeah, yeah. But, I, but I don't want to go on about him. I want to talk about us. Because if we are solid together in 100% always with the working folks of America. He could never even have a dream, never a hope, never a prayer. But because we have been on this different sides of some key issues, we, we, get, we get split. They're called a wedge issue. And he wedged us on jobs. He got up there and said, oh, I'm gonna save the jobs in Carrier. Carrier, you know Carrier? Well, you know, first of all, he said he's going to save the jobs. Half of them are, in fact, leaving. And then the other half are staying there because the people of 
uh, Indiana had somebody say, we're going to take, if you give us uh, a bunch of tax breaks, we'll stay. He didn't say nothing. But he did have the nerve to attack Chuck Jones, the head of the union, when Chuck Jones said, this man is a charlatan, he didn't say nothing. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Chuck Jones wants to, know, wants to ask, wants to know whose side is the Democratic Party on? Freddie Gray's family wants to know that if the Democratic Party will fight for good union jobs, maybe the neighborhood won't be so very blasted that the police department and the neighborhood are always in odds because all the people are poor and don't have anything and are desperate. And this is one of them keep it absolutely real moments. I, I don't know him by number, ma'am, and uh, you know, of course I have. Of course I have. So look, let me wrap up, wrap up right now. I want you all, all, all to know that we are in a battle for the nation. This is not some lightweight fight we are in. We're in a big fight. And I'm telling you now that if I am your DNC chair. Win. Win. Yeah. The working people of the United States of all colors, cultures, faiths, both, all genders, all will never, ever doubt where this Democratic Party stands. It'll be on their side. <laughs> if I'm the chair of the DNC, we will knock every door in America. We will have grassroots organizing. <laughs> if I become, when I become the chair of the Democratic Party, we will recruit, train, and organize a whole generation of new leaders who have it deep in their heart to fight the working people when they do it. And I'm going to tell you this. When I become chair of the DNC, you know, we're going to have money because we're going to fight for people every single day, and we ain't going to ask 10 people for a million dollars. We're going to ask 10 million people for $10. And you should know the other pays the piper, calls the tune, right? Yeah. If Mr. McGillicuddy is paying the piper, Mr. McGillicuddy is going to call the tune. You understand what I'm trying to say? So I just want you to know that I'm so incredibly grateful to all of you here. I'm telling you that, uh, and, I'm a, and, and, and I know I, when I win, not if, but I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say this, and I want you to know this. Um, this journey, it's been incredible talking to the DNC members, the activists, leaders in the trade union movement, getting to know my fellow candidates. I like all of them, they're all awesome people. Yes. We're gonna hang together, we ain't gonna go tear, tear each other apart if they're on that stage. Right? And I want you to know that if I'm DNC chair, I will fight for unity every single day because I know that part of what helps those other side beat us is when we turn on each other. We all hang together because we, we might be very diverse in our looks and in our prayer and in our all kinds of stuff, but we are united and solid as a wall yes. when it comes to what the Democratic stand, Party stands for and what it, and how it reaches out to all Americans. That's kind of all good. That's right. So you guys, bless you. Thank you. Let's go win this election and organize the election.